So today you join me at what was a very fogged in Blackpool airport this morning and I've come to see a chap called Pete Romfell who's in charge of the importer ship of Sirius aircraft in the UK. Pete does demo flights on them and he invited me down to come and have a look at it. So we're going to go fly in now and, and find out a bit more. Well, this is a superb aircraft, one of its kind, it's called a Sirius. There are other types with low wings, one called a Sting, which is extremely popular. Modern composite materials allow designers now to produce light sports aircraft that are extremely efficient, extremely strong, with plenty of space, and therefore they compete in a, an area of the market called light sports aircraft. These aircraft can be manufactured relatively inexpensively in the Czech Republic and Poland in particular, uh, where labour costs are cheaper, but they then tend to be brought into the UK as advanced kits that need to be assembled. The assembly can be done by amateur builders with the assistance of skilled engineers who can provide assistance when it's needed. So they're filling a, a gap in the market, if you wish, that's becoming increasingly popular. Because they're lightweight and strong, they have efficient Rotax engines. This one will cruise at 100 knots, but only burn 15 litres an hour. The fuel is contained in two separate wing tanks, which can provide seven, maybe eight hours of cruising. Good morning, Gom Charlie, India, Alpha Fox Data, the PSA, Hango with information, Tango, QNH 1037, uh, request taxi. Charlie, India, Alpha Fox Data, Black Approach, information, Tango is current, QNH correct, taxi holding point, Echo 2, runway 28 via Bravo, Charlie and Echo. Echo, taxi to Echo 2 for 28 via Bravo, Charlie and Echo, Golf India, Alpha Fox Data. Over your right shoulder, my friend, clear to the right, thank you. The engine on the 912 feels very different just sitting here, you know. It's Two. Just try the brakes. Okay. Okay, so these are half uh, differential tow brakes. If you'd like to just uh, try them on your side. Yeah, I think. So that's to the right. And then. Oh, no, left, there we go. They're not actually like pedals, are they? The more no, no, they're just uh, hard to describe. Little, yeah. little bar. Yeah. I actually had the engine warmed up earlier on, and normally before moving, make sure it was warmer than this. But we're off the stops already. So we've got cylinder head here, uh, battery. Uh, battery is charging. Cylinder head the, temperature. The oil temperature's here, which oh, yeah. is always slow to come off the stop, but once it's on the 50, it's registering. We, we know we're okay. And it's a two, it's two CHTs. Yes. For one cylinder, cylinder one and cylinder four, one at the front, one at the back. Oh, okay. And it is one of those peculiarities with Rotax is um, that they don't have c uh, cylinder uh, gas temperatures. They just t take it off the coolant. All right. Okay. Because the the sensor is so close. Yeah. To the chamber. Okay, start the checks again. So, the doors are closed and Close locked. Unlocked. We're strapped in, they're okay. secure. Okay, headsets, we're talking to each other, okay. We're on the right tank with plenty of fuel. Okay, flaps, we'll now put on to first stage for takeoff. Exercise the controls, so elevators, full and free. Room. Okay, it's set for takeoff. The pitch is on automatic, that's fine pitch now. Got my feet on the brakes, just do a power check. Hard for the brakes to hold this end. Yeah, it's blinking powerful, isn't it? 100 horse. Yeah. If you look at the power to weight ratio, 600 kilogram aircraft and 100 uh, horsepower. <laughs> 
Boom Sierra, Jenner report the right base, runway 28, the QFE 1036. That's perfectly okay. Fantastic. Right, temperatures are coming up nicely, we're charging. Temperatures of the oil now is off the stop and moving up nicely. We're on the correct frequency. We're squawking. 0450. QNH is set. Very high QNH today, isn't it? It is, yeah. There's not much to do then, is there? Not much to do. Stop from until we just confirm the squawk is 0450. Squawking 0450, go from your Zulu. From Zulu, all correct, Vika 2, runway 28, right turn up, clear for takeoff, surface wind 250 degrees, 5 knots. Fire Echo 2, right turn up, clear for takeoff, runway 28, go from your Zulu. Okay, my hands and feet are clear. Good. Approach, go on, you're out for Foxtrot at Echo 2, ready for departure. Charlie in the Alpha Fox, Roger, hold that echo 2 after the departure, right turn to the north, squawk 0450. Hold position uh, after takeoff is right turn to the north, squawk 0450 in the Alpha Fox stop. Alpha Fox, correct uh, behind the point in RB8 by echo 2, runway 28, line up and wait behind. Line up and wait behind Alpha Fox stop. It accelerates remarkably quickly, especially on tarmac. And at 40 knots, with the first stage of flap down for takeoff, at 40 knots, it simply wants to fly. It <laughs> takes off itself. Wow. So you only have to ease back very slightly uh, on, the, on the control column, and it will start to, to leave the ground. So you rapidly then are climbing from 40 knots, increasing speed to 70 knots. Yeah. Uh, at 70 knots, it will be climbing at well over 1,000 feet a minute. It indicates I'm on fully fine pitch. Oh, okay. And it is automatic having set yeah. that lever. Um, Go for the Fox at the RB8 ahead will be turning right northbound as well. Uh, we're up to the traffic, Alpha Fox Drop. Alpha Fox Drop, runway 28 clear for takeoff, surface wind 250 degrees, 4 knots. Clear for takeoff with a right turn out, Golf Charlie and your Alpha Fox Drop. But it pulls well, doesn't it? Airspeed very quickly alive. And go green upon share, you can uh, omit the right base turn. I've got your visa uh, correction, right base call. I've got your visa report final number one. Maps going up. We're climb out at uh, 70 knots. Two knots, two on board, we're doing 1200 feet. I know, I was just looking and I'm thinking we're getting high very quickly. Really impressive climb rate. Stable as well, isn't it? Yeah, it feels yeah. very stable. Yep. Turn just back off the pitch a little bit and the revs. So do you have like a max continuous the initial climb and then you'll yeah. pull it back? Yes, but I'm well, I'm well in front of that figure. It's, um, there is absolutely fantastic visibility as well all round. Yeah. Alpha Fox are basic service. Uh, basic service, Golf Alpha Fox. Right, that climb rate is extremely impressive. Well, that's settled down quite easily now to a more steady 800 feet a minute. That's all it needs. Level off of that for the moment. Yeah, speed just surges forwards. Yeah, bring the course, the pitch back to not fully coarse, but partially coarse. Uh, trim is okay. And the trim's down here, is it? That's next to the lever, yeah. Okay, we'll do 90 knots now, let it settle on that. Golf Uniform Sierra, runway 28 clear to lap, surface wind, 240 degrees, 4 knots. We still have a climb at that now, 90 knots, we're still climbing 500 feet a minute. The cruise 
is whatever you want to cruise at between a minimum of typically 80 knots, which is exceptionally low, to 110 knots. So wide range, really wide range. It's a wide range. That's one of the benefits of the, the prop being a constant speed prop, a variable pitch prop in effect. Uh, and if you are choosing to just potter around at 80 knots, you're probably going to be using something less than 10 litres an hour. If, on the other hand, you want to, to, to get somewhere, then you'd be typically cruising very, very comfortably at 100 knots, at less than 14 metres an hour. But certainly, even 110 knots is perfectly okay for the aircraft. Everything's set. Do you want to take control? I am. Control. control. Okay. Oh, God, it's quite sensitive, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite sensitive. 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 Yeah, it's and we'll settle on 100 knots and I'll bring the, uh, the pitch back a bit more. That. So we can come back to that. And if I just gradually bring the throttle back, yeah. Will you find a sweet spot for that particular speed? It's about right, 4.2. About 28 manifold pressure, 27 yeah. and a half. And that's uh, quite comfortable. I am really impressed with the stability. I actually need a bit of left rudder for some reason at the minute, just a tad. There we go. Close that little window. Uh, that little window at the front. Yeah. Cleared the windscreen now. So how does the trim work then? Is it just forwards? It's uh, yeah, forward if you want to get the nose down. Have a little play. Yeah, have a play. That's different to a wheel. I've never had one that isn't a wheel before. Yeah. It almost sets the, um, sets the yoke in position, doesn't it? Yes, you can. You can do it that way. 1,700 feet, 105 knots, and you go in places. Yeah. I mean, this is the speed that I'm doing in the Warrior, really. Yeah, yeah. The, the other good thing about that was on, what, 40.7 litres yeah. an hour. And, I mean, that's incredible, isn't it? Quite clever, the digital fuel gauge. They're, they're quite good, aren't they? Very good. Let's go do a slow turn to the right a little bit. We are clear around to the right. It's very positive in the pitch. I can feel that a little pitch movement is doing quite a lot, really. Yeah. Oh, it's a very light aircraft compared with what you generally yeah. used to, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. It's a very, very pleasant place to be. I can see why you like it. I like it as much for that as anything. Yeah, <laughs> and, and as well the speed you're getting the out of it is, is yeah. incredible. Yeah. We're at 14.7 litres an hour and we're doing 104. 104, yeah. Do you want me to go? Do you want to keep heading this way? Well, wherever you want. I'll go around to the right. Yeah. I'll do a 360. A bit more right rudder in this, it takes a bit of getting used to. There we go, thank you. Bit of left for now. That's 110 knots, which is <laughs> its uh, normal maximum rudder yeah. cruising speed. And that's denoted by the yellow line on the yes. indicated airspeed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the factory actually have these figures much higher up. It's the LAA who restrict them for the yeah. UK, which is not a bad thing. I'm quite happy with a 110 knots yeah, structural cruise. That's very good. If you want to go back out a bit, we'll bring the speed back down to, say, uh, 90 knots and do some turns, some yeah. steeper turns, yeah. if you wish. What we'll do is... Throttle back a bit. You'll have to come pitch back to get the speed down okay. to 80. It doesn't want to come down, does it? No. You see? It's amazing. Yeah, it just doesn't want to slow down. So I'll bring the throttle really right back. 
when I'm always climbing it to get the speed back. Yeah. Let's uh, virtually put the throttle off now. Okay, so we've. Uh, yeah, a lot of my on the air pretty, pretty well balanced there now, so you can do your, your turns at that, can't you? Okay. 80 knots or thereabouts. And um, we'll do one round to the left. It turns like an absolute dime, doesn't it? So yeah. Yeah. Cracking view today. It is. <laughs> Very lucky <laughs> to, to have managed to get the flight in today. Really pleased. I, need, I do need to work on my uh, rudder a little bit, but... Oh, each aircraft's different, isn't it, really? Just getting used to it. The, the thing that is particularly noticeable with such a powerful engine is on takeoff, uh, you've got to use a lot of opposite rudder yeah. uh, to counteract the torque. It's really impressive performance, and you've got the safety there as well of the, uh, the parachute as well, if things do go a little bit wrong. Yep. One of the options with aircraft of this kind is to have a, a, what's called a whole aircraft ballistic recovery system. Right. What that is really is it's a parachute. Right, okay. But it's fired out by using a propellant that pushes it out of the aircraft when you pull the famous lever. So this is the lever and before flight you remove that toggle and then you can see you have a lever here with a safety catch on it. If you were to pull that it would fire the explosive. The parachute in its container would shoot out of the side of the <laughs> aircraft and deploy in a very rapid time, literally two seconds the parachute wow. would have been deployed. When that is pulled in the cockpit then it pulls and ejects a container that then fires the propellant. It's not explosive in the sense of being gunpowder, it's, yeah. a, it's a chemical propellant and when that fires, it then fires a container out of here. It pushes this out of the side, pushes it out about 30, 40 metres, and then the parachute itself comes out of the container. Oh, right, OK. okay. What that does do, however, is that the cables that are attached to it, these very big cables, will then be pulled up into this direction so that it then will be centred over the wheels and bring the aircraft down steadily. We're still in the right tank, which we'll leave it on for the moment. Steep this one up a little bit. Well, left rudder. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, the rudder in this is it's a lot different to the PA28 in Cessna's, really. Yeah. You don't. You don't need to coordinate more wearing that you know, in mine. Yeah. You don't. Turn out to talk zero four five zero. It'll be a left turn out squawk at zero four five zero. Come to the right. Coordinating the rudder more this time. There we go, that's better. A bit too much rudder. <laughs> Lovely. And the end, a bit of rudder coming out. Black Pearl Approach, uh, Golf Charlie, India, Alpha, Foxtrot is uh, Fleetwood for rejoin information tag now, QNH 1037. Charlie, India, Alpha, Foxtrot, Roger, QNH is correct, join report, right base, runway 28, and the QFE 1036. Join right base uh, for 28, uh, QFE 1036, Golf India, Alpha, Foxtrot. I like having the 80s back now. <laughs> I mean, 80 knots there at 12.5 gallons an hour, aren't we? Litres. Litres, sorry, yeah. yeah. I was doing gallons. And that's, that is amazing. What's the best you've had on it, you know, at a realistic speed? Is it? Well, uh, 100 knots, I work out, it's 15 litres an hour at 100 knots. That satisfies me. If, if I'm flying solo, 
and I did 80 knots, it's less than 10 litres an hour. I've actually backed off because we were still climbing slightly on that. Yeah. So just, this is the interesting thing, you get the technique of just being very, very careful with the throttle yeah. to get that little bit extra out of it. Yeah. But now you can see we're level, oh, we'll be in a second. we're level 85 knots and it's now 11.4. You know, it's, it's Get back a tap more. Anyway, you can chase the fuel too much there. Two for ten point eight now, but yeah. we're going down slightly. So the landing is straightforward. The approach speed is uh, tends to be sixty knots. Although the chief flight engineer, uh, the Light Aircraft Association, who flies these, says that really the ideal is fifty five knots because with such a low. Um, stall speed and multiply it up by the theoretical was it 1.13 you should really be landing at 55 knots but I just feel that it's, it's you have more control over it at 60 knots yeah. and having said that 60 knots is a very very uh, comfortable speed yeah, if, you, if you're coming to this land in a, a farm street strip at 60 knots the minute you touch the the, the floor and you pull, pull the power off you're going to be stopped in 100 meters yeah so 60 knots is a, is a very comfortable speed to be to be landing at, and the and the approach is very controllable. It's a, you set up a nice long approach with the uh, the trim full back, and uh, there is just a very it's very easy to maintain that approach speed, which is important. With some aircraft, it can be. Uh, a little bit faster and then you slow down and then you have to speed up a little bit but once you've set the pitch and the, you, the trim and you're at 60 knots on the approach then you stay at 60 knots and it's a very easy aircraft to land. Uh, number two following the RV on final just turning final now Alpha Foxtrot. But ready on it, can expect a land after. Expect a land after, that's what I've got. speed back then in that case. That's the nice thing about this, is you can come in quite slowly then, can you? Can do, I'll put my flaps down now at that first stage flap. He's just past the threshold now. I've gone on to fine pitch, and I'm going on to fully course, uh, on to the uh, pitch is full back now, yep. and fully fine pitch on there, so we're now at uh, 70 knots and it's just drifting in very slowly. And the trim is all the way back there. All the way back at that, yeah. That's what you can land after the RV8 will be vacating runway 31 and Alpha, the wind 230 degrees at 5. Clip to land after, we'll land long for the PFA Hacker, thank you, Arthur Foxtrot. Make sure there's about three quarters of the way down now. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's fine. I'll come on to full flap now then and then. Down come the barn doors. I always land, like to land well past the friction surface, yeah. saves the tyres, and it also means that um, with vacating 3-1 and alpha for the PFA, it means that I'm not dawdling, taxiing no. when people want to drop down behind you. My favourite runway to land on is 1-0 and then try and get off at Delta, which I usually do, yeah. and sometimes nearly get, get off at 3-1 if I can yeah. do it. It just feels unbelievably slow, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Know. I mean, what, what's the sort of shorter strip you can get in and out of in there? Oh, 200 metres is... Really? Oh, yeah, Busy day now. November 6th, we're going to make that approach standby.
Very nice. You can really drop them in, can't you? Alpha, back to parking. A 3 Alpha 2 parking, Alpha Foxtrot. It's the sort of thing that I like about Blackpool, is that it, it, it's big enough to do what you need to do with yeah. big aircraft, and yet it's, um, it's more like a family. Yeah. You can go and have a chat with air traffic, you'll be quite happy to. Oh, that's absolutely marvellous, thank you so much. Yeah, it was great to... It's been very interesting. Really, really, really like it. 